You know, I've always wanted to do about three things with my life. Call it a bucket list, if you will. First, I've always wanted to hug a tropical plant. Done. Two, I want to hang out with David Bowie. Not done. And three, I've always wanted to teach people about mechanical advantage. Let's roll. Welcome. Mechanical advantage, welcome. So let's say we got a lever, some, this little machine. The purpose of the machine is to make our lives easier. That gives us a mechanical advantage or a ratio of force. Now, the first type of force that we need, right, is the size of the load, which usually is the weight, gravity times mass, okay? And then we have the size of the effort. The, it's, it's our work that we put into that lever, okay? So the mechanical advantage formula is the force of the load over the force of the effort. So let's, let's run through a little example. Let's say you have a 1988 Dodge Aries K car, which by the way was my first car and I still love it. It's stuck in the mud though, can't move. So we find a rock, a giant log, and we decide to make a first class lever. And we put an effort there to lift up the load now, the force of the load and the force of the effort are two different things. Let's just say that this load, this Aries K car, uh, 2,500 newtons of weight. And this machine only requires 500 newtons of effort. So, let's put it into our formula. Force of the load, 2,500 newtons. Force of the effort, 500 newtons. When we divide this up, we will have this ratio of force. So, you'll notice that there is no units. That's what a ratio is. Oh, sorry about that crappy A. The mechanical advantage, this is the important stuff. When it is greater than 1, you will have a multiplication of your effort. It means that this machine, look, look at this glorious machine. Look at it, it's right here. It means that it will make your effort five times more awesome in order to lift up the car. You couldn't put 500 newtons with your bare hands and lift it up. However, if the mechanical advantage is less than one, then you have a speed effect. Now that's good. It'll do the job faster, but it'll require a lot more force. Okay, this next little section can be a little bit difficult because I, I'm going to attempt to uh, help you understand that the mechanical advantage in terms of newtons, right here, in terms of force, is directly proportionate to distance. Check this out. You have this first class lever, there's a big fella and there's a little fella, okay? You have your little fulcrum there. This big guy is exactly three times as heavy as this other little guy. So we have ourselves a ratio right there. But we know that if we move the fulcrum this way and that, it changes. One is more difficult, but it'll get the job done fast. And one is really easy, but it won't lift as high. So this is the mechanical advantage we were talking about in the previous example. So we have our effort and our load. The effort obviously is the big guy. So um, we have the load, little guy, one part, and big guy, three parts, okay, in terms of force. But this also equals or is proportionate to the distance or the effort arm, okay, over the load arm. Now the effort arm, okay, when we have this, here, let me redraw this. Here's our effort, here's our load. The distance between the effort and the fulcrum is the effort arm. The distance between the load and the fulcrum is called the load arm. So when we move that fulcrum from side to side, it changes our mechanical advantage. So the question we can ask ourselves now is, how far would we have to move the fulcrum closer to the effort so that it's exactly flat? If we've got a big guy that's three times as heavy as this one guy. So we look at all this. Here's distance in newtons. So let me just redraw our little plank because we have, in proportion, one part load, three parts effort, okay, for the force, which is directly proportioned to one part effort arm, to three parts load arm, okay? So the distance is the same proportion as the force, where one part is effort and three parts load. So this can be very confusing sometimes, but mechanical advantage still is the same thing. It's a ratio of force, but it can also be a ratio of distance when you're talking about a lever. 
So to conclude this example, let's just say we want it balanced, right? So let's pretend it's four meter plank, okay? Four meters divided by four parts, you know, one part load, one three parts effort, okay? The effort arm should be one meter away from the fulcrum and the load should be three meters away from the fulcrum in order for it to be balanced. This is mechanical advantage. I really hope this helped. Be excellent to each other.